Okay, we're ready for worksheet 7b in the Math 4 course. First set of questions is very much like uh, quiz 7b is going to be like, is that you're going to be given questions here, and, and what you're asked is, are these good statistical questions? Uh, if the answer is yes, we want to know whether the data would be considered numerical or categorical. Uh, and so uh, <clears throat> a lot of times when you have questions that start with how many, how many days are in March, there's one answer. That's a bad question. How many players are on Enlo's wrestling team? There's one answer for that. And that is a bad question. So that uh, whenever you see the how many questions, that is, that is usually uh, a, a ticket to a bad one. Now, do you like cheese dip? That is, and, and I've noticed that when we tend toward yes, no answers, uh, they also make for bad statistical questions. Uh, you want more variety than just yes or no. Um, you know, even the issue of collecting data, do you like cheese dip? Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Set up a tasting with 43 <laughs> kinds of cheese? Um, you know, that, that, that's a possibility. But again, you keep coming back to the issue of it's either yes or no. And there's just not enough variation in the data. So this is also a bad one. Um, what was the temperature at noon today in Raleigh? There is no variation there. Now, if you were talking about the temperature at noon all week, you might have seven different answers. But because you're only looking at one day, one time, there's one temperature. And that makes for a bad statistical question. What were the student scores for the math test? Now, at first glance, this sounds like they want a list. Um, but you, you stop and think about it. If somebody asks you that question, what were the student scores for the math test? Do they really want a list of 90 scores? What they're really, you know, this, this seems to be the undercurrent of it is, is that they're really asking for something more like a measure of central tendency, a mean, a median, a mode, something like that. And so if that's what's, what the game is, then yes, this is a good one. And um, since you are talking about averaging scores, that would be numerical. Okay. Now, the rest of the questions, which class earned the most points? Now, this one you have to be careful of because at first glance, it sounds like, uh, you know, it might be a deterministic answer. But the thing is, in order to get an answer for this, you do have to compare the other classes. Now you've got variation in your data and it was, you know, it, it did take data collection to even address this. So yes, I would say uh, this is a good statistical question, but now here, when you're talking about which class earned the most points, you're looking at them more as categories rather than, you know, I, I want to get a, a, a numerical average or something like that. No, it's just a matter of counting the points. So I would say that this is more of a categorical data uh, kind of issue rather than numerical. Now, how many branches does the oak tree have? There is the word that shakes this entire problem up is the. And when I say the oak tree, I'm, think, I'm thinking they're talking about one in particular. And if it's one oak tree, then it has a certain number of branches that you can count and you're done. You know, a deterministic answer. This is a bad question. Now, if they'd wanted to turn it into a good question, all they would have to do is change that and say, how many branches does an oak tree have? And suddenly you're talking about every oak tree in the park, you know? Uh, and you would need to collect some data. How many branches does this one have or that one have? And, uh, you know, you can start talking about uh, mean, median, and, you know, standard deviations and box plots and all that kind of stuff. How long did each person, there's the word there, each, that usually tells you that uh, you're, you're not looking for a list of, you know, this person took 10 minutes, that person took 20 minutes, and you're not looking for a list of 100 people. How long did each one take to eat lunch? 
you're really asking for an average here, you know, or, or some sort of uh, uh, central tendency. Uh, so yes, this is a good statistical question. And because you are now talking about things like mean, median, and mode, that would be numerical. You're looking at averaging those numbers. What were the scores for the basketball team this season? Again, this is just like, uh, um, you know, how long did each person take to eat lunch? You really want a list of all the scores for the entire season? No, what this seems to be asking is more likely is for a uh, measure of central tendency, um, you know, mean or median or something like that. So yeah, I would say this is good. And again, you are talking about averaging stuff. So that's gonna be numerical. How many cities had more than two inches of snow in North Carolina? Um, you know, ultimately this boils down to a yes, no question. Either they did or they didn't. Um, and, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's very vague on the time frame. Are we talking about this year? Are we talking about this month? Are we talking about one particular snowfall? Uh, so, uh, you know, it's kind of bad on, on, on a couple of levels. Um, you really need to avoid yes or no answers for statistical questions. Uh, you also need to avoid vagueness. Um, you know, that if you're going to go and collect data, what are the limits? You know, are we talking about this year or this month? Um, you know, put, you have to have a sense of, of limit on uh, when you're going to be collecting data. All right, let's move on to the next example. We're going back to uh, the um, uh, student survey files. And this time we're going to create a graphical display with outdoor activities hours. Uh, we got to decide if any data points should be edited or removed. And you know, we'll give the reasons for the changes. So let's go back here, hours of act outdoor activities. So I'm gonna pull up a graph. I'm gonna move him up there so I can see him. Now, outdoor activities, I believe, uh, is gonna be further down. So I'm, I'm going to have to, let me know. That's the favorite physical activity. Um, I'm going to have to use the tab button here and look for outdoor activities. There we go. I think that is it. Yes, it is. So I'm going to drag that over here. Oh, phooey. There we go. I need to be able to see the x-axis, outdoor activities. And there we go. So now we can stretch this out and look at it. Now, um, here's a couple of things to look at is, is you know, what you consider uh, outliers. Now we could do a box plot and show outliers. And they consider everybody above 20 hours to be outliers. Um, and when you think about it, you know, let, let's be reasonable on this. You know, you get out of school, you know, maybe three o'clock uh, by the time you're ready to do outdoor activities. And even uh, uh, at the height of summer, you know, you're talking about sundown at least by eight or nine o'clock at night. Um, well, I guess you could do outdoor activities in the dark too, but, uh, you know, for the most part, let's say four or five hours times five days a week, that's maybe 20 hours. And then on the weekends, 12 and 12, uh, that's 44 hours. So I, <clears throat> I would say that anybody that does more than 40 hours of outdoor activities, um, I, I, I don't see how they're passing school at all because uh, they have to be skipping school to be doing that. So, you know, let's say that everybody above 40 hours is going to be considered not usable. So we're going to hide those selected cases. <clears throat> and we're going to work with what's left. 
and we still have some outliers in the group because there are some people that just spend lots of time outdoors and, and a big part of that is probably going to be weekends. Um, but let's go back here and let's explain that um, uh, reasonable high school student doesn't spend Forty plus hours outside. All right, name one good and one bad. So let's take a good look at the uh, at the data set, and um, you know we can throw all sorts of mean and median. <clears throat> Now, this is what I was talking about a little earlier, was that you've got the mean at six, which means that six hours, you've got half of the students six or below, half of the students six or above. And uh, then you've got the, the, the mean at 7.71. Now, when, you know, how did the mean, how did the average get higher than the median? It was because of these guys over here, these outliers that are dragging the average to the right. And so this is what we mean when we say that something is skewed right. Now, if I uh, take the outliers out, here my right whisker is clearly a lot longer than my left, left one. This one is definitely skewed right. And so, um, you know, we, we, when, when we want to know where does the middle live, the middle is going to live somewhere between 3 and 10 hours. So uh, that, that, you know, um, and that might make for a good question. Um, you know, what, give a range of the typical number or, or the number of hours that a typical student spends, uh, give, give a reasonable range. So let's, let's phrase it that way. Um, Right, give a reasonable range. <clears throat> now, uh, a bad question is one that is only going to have one answer. For instance, um, how many students said that they spent 20 hours outside? Well, that's going to be one answer. So that, that's probably a, a really good, bad answer. Um, And then you could paste the graph below. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, I think I would leave the outliers on there. And um, I don't know that you necessarily have to have the mean and the median. But I think the box plot says, says everything you need to know at this point. Now, just, uh, you know, for comparison, the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, again, that gives you a sense of the middle. Um, you know, for them, the middle would be from one hour to 14 hours, which is kind of broad. That's why I like the, the box plot to answer uh, the question of what's, what's a typical range, probably from three to 10. Um, so that is it for that one. Now we got one more that we need to go through. This time we're going to do watching TV hours and uh, you know play the same game with it. Um, so we're going to get rid of this graph and watching, talking, doing, 
I have a feeling that I'm going to need to do watching TV hours. There, wait a minute now. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so I got a graph and watching TV hours, and we're dropping the x axis. And um, we're going to spread it out a little bit here. <coughs> now, um, I'm kind of thinking along the same lines as being outdoors. You know, we figured out that <clears throat> anybody spending more than 40 hours is probably not going to school. Um, and so I'm kind of thinking watching TV would be the, at, at the same level. Uh, there are some people that would watch TV every waking hour if they could versus some people being outdoors every waking hour. You know, these... <laughs> These are similar questions, and so we probably would want to take anything above 40 and say, nope. And we're going to hide those, and we're going to stretch the rest. And um, so now we've, we've got this. Now let's, let's see what the, the box plot does here. And you see where the middle is, and you see the, the big long string to the right, which means that uh, you know, my, my median is going to fall right there at three, but my mean is probably going to be somewhere over here because of all these numbers up here. Let's see, let's see what the mean is. Yeah, the mean is at 5.17, whereas the median was down here at three. So, you know, half of the kids watch three hours or less, half of the kids watch three hours or more. But to say that the average kid watches five hours, <coughs> Look at where five is. I mean, uh, five, uh, let me remove that for a second. Uh, more than half of the number lives below five. Um, I might even say that two thirds of them are at five or less. So I'm not sure that five is a good fit there. Uh, you know, again, we could ask a good question of, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what is a reasonable range of hours of watching TV and you know Q1 is one, Q3 is seven. So we could answer that to say is that, you know, your your typical student watches one to seven hours a week. Um, so, you know, that is a good statistical question. So we'll, um, uh, one good. Um, Let's phrase it this way, because we don't like how many. What range of viewing hours for typical student? <clears throat> There's a good one, and then a bad one. Let's see. We, you know, last time we we said something like how many watch for ten hours. Um, we could ask, you know, how many watched more than twenty hours, and that would be considered a bad question because there is a finite answer uh, to that. And then you can paste the graph below. And um, yeah, I think I would leave the box plot on that. Um, you know, once again, standard deviation is just simply, you know, giving you everybody from zero to 517 and 656 would be 11.7, something like that. So, uh, you know, you could say that two thirds of the kids watch less than 12 hours a week. Um, but, and, and that's not a bad thing either. Um, uh, you know, this is where, you know, both box plot and standard deviation 
uh, have their usefulness. And sometimes it's just which one paints the better picture, uh, you know, to make the response that you're trying to make. So anyway, all right, clip and paste that to the notes and we should be done.